Let's talk call in radio. Good morning. This is Let's Talk, getting to the root causes of the important issues of the day. This on the Air Community Forum believes your voice matters and welcomes all thoughts and views about com- uh, without judgment. Sorry. Please join today's conversation by calling 415 663 Eight four nine two four one five six six three eight four nine two, or tweet us at Let's Talk on KWMR. Who wrote that? <laughs> it, Moliere. It was, it was written back in time immemorial. That's when it was written. Back when we started the show. Uh, anyway, this is Let's Talk, and uh, that voice was the voice of Sally Phillips. Shelley Rugg is uh, out of town, and Charles couldn't make it today. Charles Schultz couldn't make it today. So we have Sally Phillips, Stephen, Stephen Hurwitz, and I'm Paul <coughs> Raphael. Three co-hosts talking about beauty. And why are we talking about beauty? Well... Because I, uh, I read an article, which I have to stop doing. I keep reading articles <laughs> about things. And, uh, and it was about beauty. You know, it used to be the philosophical ideal of beauty. What is beauty? Is it subjective? Is it objective? Is it, uh, is it all just in the eye of the beholder, as they say? Or is it, is there, are there qualities in things that are universally beautiful? And so... You start to think about that and is a beautiful day. What is a beautiful day? It's a beautiful day. Is a, uh, for us, it's a sunny day that's warm and no wind. <laughs> Not like yeah. yesterday. Um, but, uh, exactly. you know, it's a beautiful day out there today, but the wind's blowing. So yes, does that make it any me. less beautiful? Absolutely. It does? Ah, well, okay. So are there... A swimmer. Uh, What's that? You're oh, a you're a swimmer. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, a little choppy and chilly out there. Yep. So uh, it's there's a uh, there's a new book out called A Taste for the Beautiful, and uh, it's written by uh, Michael J. Ryan, The Evolution of Attraction. It's mostly about sexual selection, about which two people in Marshall wrote a book. Isn't that interesting, <laughs> though? Uh, <laughs> When I was just uh, looking up some things about beauty, it seems to come down to uh, most of it was about the female. Uh, I did see some things about the male, especially about the uh, the curse of beauty. Oh yeah, and uh, well, that's an interesting. The curse of beauty. Beautiful women are harassed certainly more than those who are deemed less beautiful whatever that means what, is the what curse does that even mean broader than just beyond women is uh, it for uh highly decorative species of creatures that are then hunted and acquired either in, either thrown in point. a cage so everyone can say look at that beautiful creature in that cage or are they more perversely even perhaps uh killed stuffed taxidermied look at this beautiful thing that i captured and caught and killed and stuffed and mounted on my wall i mean it's a strange there's a thing about beauty and our trying to 
kill it. C- well, capture well, ca- it. capture it. Capture it and thus maintaining its beauty, the inherent beauty uh, that's perceived um, for like forever. Like, you know, like you can't let go of it. Well, a beautiful landscape uh, seems people have no reluctance to destroy it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. very true. Well, that that was uh, what was that movie? It was Dan Dan Aykroyd and uh, all that whole bunch, and they were. He was look. He was playing a, a real estate developer, and they were looking out across this beautiful mountain lake scene with uh, mountains and trees and the shimmering blue lake. And they said, "Isn't it beautiful?" And he says, "Yeah, it'll be beautiful when I." put a mall over there and I see a hotel and a marina down there, which is what they wanted to do in West Marin to to Tomales Bay. That would have been beautiful for a lot of people coming here. They would have said, oh, this is lovely. And uh, people who lived here said, no, we don't think that's going to be so lovely, so beautiful. So, yes, a beautiful uh, beautiful idea of, uh, of commercializing a beautiful landscape. You know that's that's the point. Uh, ideas can be beautiful as well. It's ah. not just uh, uh, reserved for the physical. Hmm. Beautiful ideas, really. Absolutely. Hmm. Oh. That's a beautiful idea. Democracy. Yeah. Really? So beauty exalted, as in a beautiful idea, could be an exalted idea, an idea that's for, for, thought to be for the greater good. Or an idea just to let's all go to Joe Schmoe's and get a cocktail. Well, that's a beautiful idea. Um, it's kind of a euphemism. Who's this Joe it, Schmo? I don't know. I was just trying not to say a real business. He's a beautiful Even guy. though I secretly have a restaurant called Joe Schmoe's. Joe Schmo. Come on down. We're giving them away. Uh, so beauty is what we're talking about today on Let's Talk. You can join the conversation. Yeah. 415 415- Six six three eight four nine two. We'd love to hear you chime in. So yes. much of it is about physical beauty, and especially uh, women and humans. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, women get probably the uh, big, big part of it. And what's interesting is that, of course, everybody knows the concepts of beauty uh, change depending on what your culture. Right. One one culture might think one thing's beautiful; another might think. Exactly. So uh, ideals of feminine beauty have certainly changed over the years, although youth is basically a a common thread through it all. If you have a suntan that's uh, looked with disfavor in China, Mm -hmm. interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah. It means you're lower class. You're a worker in the fields, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and in are. some cultures, you know, of course, we we revere the, the thing of being impossibly skinny and ra- razor thin, and what Tom Wolfe called social X rays, <laughs> the New York socialites and so forth, who were social X rays. Um, <laughs> uh, that was so apt. And in other cultures, that is, it's just terrible. Why would you want yeah, some bony? It's, and of course, it's always applied to women. Why would you want some bony chick, right? So um, that well, that fleshiness is a sign of either affluence or being more, being more, or just being more ra- well rounded in your figure. What am I trying to say? Voluptuous. Well, well, the hourglass well, figure has been women with hourglass figures, meaning narrow waist and wide hips, have been studied, and uh, and they are in general more fertile. Well, you know, Gail, who's an expert in this uh, area of weight and body, mm. she says that some women, beautiful women, be, obesity is actually a uh, a form of defense. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That is absolutely true, yes. So you're trying to defend and ward off. You've had perhaps a bad experience, and uh, you will never, no one will ever, You'll you, you create a sort of an impenetrable, Mm. Uh, barrier, yeah. barrier between you and, and protection. Uh, yeah. So there, it's, that's beauty as a curse again. Yes. Attractiveness. Uh, yes. Mm. That's right. I mean, it. Yeah, it's fending off. It's 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 feeling that you've been attacked or you're vulnerable and you're protecting well, yourself. Yeah. There's an online magazine called Quora, and this is something mm. they wrote. He said. 
My friendly advice to really pretty girls is this. Go out with a guy friend. His presence will discourage potential suitors, and he can fend off the ones who actually do come. Something called the friend zone. Competition attract friends. Huh. So we got we have something called the friend zone. Hmm. To uh, to aid attractive women in yes, public keep, to the, keep the right. keep other men's hands off them. Exactly. I don't know. I That's prefer that thing, though, all girls can we just not, learn can to we just take get over that? <laughs> care of themselves and be have the opportunity to learn um, some kind of either a martial art or some other way of self defense. Uh, I I love I love those empowered girls who who are just super badass and they and they they can um, they're like black belts in jujitsu or something mm. at age fourteen. I just that mm. gives me a thrill. Oh, really it warms the cockles of my heart. Good heavens! It sounds scary to me. Or ah, a, that's that's man. the point. Same article though talks about uh, well it doesn't really but I I add this in there's a. I think beauty advantage also mm. in terms of getting a job tall. Absolutely yeah, true. That's, that is definitely proven, yes. And we have a caller. You're on the air, caller. Please uh, give us your name, turn your radio down, and please keep the language clean. I will try. <laughs> good morning. It's good to hear Sally's voice. This is MK. Hi, um, okay. um, I think this kind of goes back to last week's story, I mean, program about ignorance. Hmm. That, you know, we're kind of told what's beautiful, you know, but by Madison Avenue mainly and the advertising. So I frankly think that Rubens was really onto something, but, um, <laughs> or art. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, and also, also, I think that there can be people who are actually, if you're talking about physical beauty of, of people that are rather plain, but if they're intelligent and funny and sexy and, and open, and aware and awake, they're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, it's not- well, uh, to your point, MK, I also, I think that you can know a person, you can meet a person and not find them particularly, let's say, beautiful or attractive, whether it be uh, young or old, a man or woman, what, whatever. And then as you get to know them, you you find them to be more beautiful they, or, they touch something or less so. You. They, they 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 get a response from you by their by their presence, and that that is the beautiful thing. I mean, Seattle's so beautiful right now because every garden is just insanely full of peonies and daisies and and all sorts of wonderful things. So it's you know it's this, the physical beauty of the of the world is mm. is really wonderful right now, and yeah. um, even though it's not you know a very happy place, uh, <laughs> you can make well. it happy in your own backyard. Exactly. Sally, you used the word attractive when you were talking. So yeah, beauty Sally is did. attractive. It, is it, does that go along with beauty that it makes you want uh, more of it? Uh, it? It might be a little bit outside and beyond. Beauty is, um, I don't know, MK, I think of your Facebook posts and how you post art every day. Every day, every chance I get. Every yep. day, maybe several times a day, uh, a piece of art uh, or an image of art. This may have gone all the way off the rails, Stephen, from your question. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's typical. Don't worry about <laughs> I'll it. I'll come back. That's the nature <laughs> but of the program. I think of art as beauty. And then I think of humans as attractive or not attractive in the case of my My first mother-in-law people. Um, yep. used the word unattractive. To, you, to describe anybody who is Jewish, and I don't mm. like that word. It was um, it was like she was, well, she was a horrible person. But but um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, obviously. that word has bad connotations for me. So, but. well, I think it's not the word's fault. It's the it's it's that right. It's, 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 it's like it's you like mean Jewish? Or are you talking about a different word? Attractive. Oh, I see. Well, it's like like knowing somebody <laughs> named Myrtle who's really homely. You're not going to like the name Myrtle. Well, that they happens. Mean, they were mean to you or stepped on your toes. That's the subjective thing. Wherever someone's going to have a baby, they don't like to, people, young people don't like to say the name that they're thinking about. To, they don't like to tell it hmm. to others because it's invariably true. you get, and, and it's, no, it, no, no, it's usually it. your best friend or your mother who suggests a name and then 
the person, the woman who says, no, 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 that reminds me of a really annoying kid I knew in grammar school who uh, Mm. threw cherry tomatoes at me. Mm. I mean, it's so subjective and emotional and deep in the, in this, the memory banks and you know, psyche. The, the, art, the art thing on, on Facebook that I do is because my sister, um, with whom I am somewhat estranged, lives in New Hampshire, and she's a rabid Democrat, and, a, and, she, and I'm, you know, that's, that's a good thing, I guess. But she just pushes it way too far and is always right about everything and la, 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 la. <laughs> so a couple of years ago, I started going to the websites of MoMA and and the Guggenheim and everybody I could think of, Peggy Guggenheim Foundation and all of it. And so I get all these art posts, and I would post them as many as I could to try to counteract her, her, my sister's rabid political stuff. And so, but now, exactly. now I really love doing it, and I get a lot of stuff that I don't post, but I can also find some absolutely wonderful Ah, so, so, people that I didn't know anything about, you know, really. Mm. Yeah, so you're learning and about different artists, right? And discovering, and, and it's an antidote and, and to buy, get their books and you know do all this stuff. Mm. And it's an yeah, antidote no to um, to the sort of hyper politicizing that is getting you down on the. And what people had for lunch, you know. I'm glad people eat lunch. It's well, good. I'm so happy for them. They're not starving. But I don't care. Food you know? can be thought of as beautiful. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I think people... There are beautiful lunches, but not every day. Not a cheese sandwich. I mean, come on. Yeah, online. <laughs> you know, Posting your lunch online. Yeah. You know, there yeah. there might be some common uh, common qualities of uh, beauty. Uh, gee, well, let me find this. Two artists did a uh, study as to find out what people... Uh, what the what the common uh it's i got it written down by the way hmm <laughs> all you got to do is find it yes uh, <laughs> the, uh they ask people uh, things uh uh beautiful things they like the most yeah. in terms of art and what they like the least and um it was interesting what they came up with and i'll tell you <laughs> later no, no. did postmodernism no, I remember, somehow i remember but they found out that uh what most people uh, the, it liked in paintings was a landscape with water and sky and mountain. Uh, universally, they found that this was an attractive image in art for most people. Hmm. Yeah. So the question is, the is the landscape. rendering, the artistic rendering of the landscape, in other words, is the landscape itself more pleasing or is the rendering by an artist more pleasing mm. which is more beautiful ah. i think it's both I, 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 and i think that um that familiar things that it can, can make you feel safer than you know than exploring a portrait of somebody or a or a war scene or a you know a, a, something more more disturbing that you know it's it's, it's just easier for many of us who aren't painters, but some of us are painters, and have tried to do, you know, make landscapes. I make seascapes because I love the ocean, and um, and I, I, I like them. I like mm. them a lot, and I understand them. But it's it's a it's a safe it's a safe place. It's like mm. the formal portraits. Well, isn't right. there a are, difference are between good and bad? I mean, you can't just say all all seascapes are beautiful. No, of course. No, and some of them are. Some of them aren't. You're never going to see me posting any any pictures of anything that Jeff Koons made. I'll either I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh. I, Wait a minute. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> Stevie is a Koons guy. I know he got I'm me. With you, he, le- he left me well, when he good, came good up with you. a. Bless, uh, bless your heart. He came up with this <laughs> memorial. <laughs> he does lovely balloons, doesn't he? <laughs> no, I'm no, changing I'm, my mind about yeah. the guy. Yeah, but art arts artists are not all invested in in creating beauty. No, no not not at all. Not oh. at all. So, oh, the twentieth century. I mean, right from the well, get go, it, ha- right. it was anti well, think of Goya. Beauty, really. I mean, come on. I mean, well, wow. also those those um, who Paul. We saw the art exhibit at, at um, the Metropolitan Museum of Art of the the artists who were rendering uh, life in the trenches in World War One. Mm. Yeah, um, wow. and of course his name is Otto Dix. Mm-hmm. Was one of the artists oh, yeah, right. really yeah. tough stuff, it and I tough, think that's the again. I think that's absolute 
absolutely crucial, and I think... It's very the, brave. Uh, the rendering was beautifully done. Yeah. That was... They were uh, powerful. Uh, so powerful pieces of art that were actually they saying were something. They were beautiful. They were ugly. They were... Grotesque. And yeah, everything. All that. Yeah. Well, it's like Goya's, Goya's pictures of the Spanish wars, the, you know, the people hanging from trees, yeah. the, you know, the people without limbs, and, mm. and they're beautiful. I mean, they're, they're gorgeously, gorgeously rendered. Mm. I don't think I, I've seen them, and I personally wouldn't call them beautiful. Well, I, no, yeah, those, so that particular group of uh, George, paintings. Uh, George Grosch was the other one. Hmm? George Grosch, yeah. That's right. And this is, but this is where we differ in how do we define beautiful yeah, or well, beauty. I mean, I like Odillon well. Redon, which you're always posting the work of, I of love Redon, uh, MK. Yep. And I, I mean, it's, there's, it's, it's sort of mythological and symbolic and s- a little surrealistic. And I, I find it to be very beautiful because of the choices of the color and the medium. He's using pastels. And there isn't anybody else like him. Right. He's unique. I think yeah. Van Gogh was, uh, uh, people didn't understand him from... Uh, well, the outrage. Yeah. yeah I, I don't think they saw his paintings as beautiful. So it's, you know, it's depends on your time. Even Seurat and Matisse at, at the time, people were outraged. It's like Stravinsky. Huh, people that's people interesting. walking out right, and exactly. shouting it down. Like you know, you yeah. know that's another yeah. thing. Talk about music. I think mm. uh, more people listen to music than see art and, uh, and have clearly more uh, uh, defined tastes regarding that. Hmm. Again, well, like, beauty in music. Philip well, Glass's yeah. music with changing parts. I mean... Mm-hmm. That was just a shocker. Yes, I don't know if you're right. familiar familiar with that with his work, but um, yeah, <laughs> it's just but it grows on you. And he's such an interesting person too. So mm-hmm. uh, I just want to interject that we have uh, an yet another phone line that we encourage people to call four one five. So you guys can. Oh, yeah, I don't want you. Don't need to anon unless you want to. I just wanted to let. I'm just sitting know. here. Okay. I'm on a new medication that's making me much better, so I'm enjoying the feeling. So uh-huh. feel good, feel good oh, darling. Better. Yeah. Four one five six six three eight three one seven six six three eight three one seven. Is there uh, the line? Get in on this fascinating discussion. Everybody has an opinion on beauty. I mean, come on, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, opinion on beauty. I don't know that I have an opinion. I mean, I have taste. I have taste. Uh, in in what makes me think something is beautiful, but uh, I that would be purely subjective, wouldn't it? I, which is okay. I mean, call us, please, fine. call in that's and say what, what you find beautiful. beautiful. Voices, like Charlie isn't that Charles a beautiful baby? Hear what he has to say about it. Oh well, Charles, yes, yeah. he w- like he your beautiful have. voice, my beautiful <laughs> voice. Yeah. Well, sure, also but done. that's also <laughs> really like so much of it is subjective, and beautiful. Voice. It's how uh, I am. I feel particularly uh, sensitive to voices, and I respond very strongly to the the sound or the tenor mm. of a voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do we have? Are you talking that. about speaking or singing or singing? What, or uh, well, both actually. I've actually had had the feeling that certain announcers on certain radio stations made my. Th- throat want to close up it's really <laughs> weird like i've had actual visceral visceral Good responses Lord. to certain voices uh but singing voices yeah especially some really mm-hmm. repel me mm-hmm. don't listen to music in the shower i don't listen to the eagles for collapse. that reason and uh the red hot chili peppers i can't abide the <laughs> singer but john kale mm. so leontine price can come sing to me anytime yes that sounds good. Indeed. And for me, of course, Ella Fitzgerald. Yes. She can sing any time. So what are your thoughts, Stephen Hurwitz? On? Any, music. On music and music. voice. Well, I'm a, a, I'm a, a Paul Nomfler fan, and uh, uh, I think he has a terrific uh, voice. Not only that, but he's a terrific songwriter. Mark Knopfler. Mark Knopfler. Did I hmm. say Paul? You did. I was thinking of you. because I'm here. I, I, that's right. I was thinking of you. <laughs> But he's fantastic. I like him. Well, I, I just wonder whether you can hear a voice and you can make conclusions as to who they are and 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 what they oh. think. You know, 
I just mm. there are certain voices that I say to myself, I cannot picture her uh, at the head of a uh, a table uh, at a boardroom. I just I you know the voice I just can't picture that voice is a, in a leadership position. Mm. Interesting. Well, yes, the uh, that thing about the. Uh, beautiful voice but the croaky voice that is so prevalent now among young women especially uh yeah totally. people that sing through their noses totally yeah. um we have another <laughs> caller on the other line hi caller you're on the air what's your name please i couldn't help but chime in it's uh, such a fascinating discussion oh my it's Krita. Krita. on the rowing machine hey Krita. <laughs> hey you know um, back to the even back to the definition of beauty. I think beauty is so subjective. I mean, mm. what I feel is beautiful. You guys are are not saying is beautiful, and or you are, or one other thing, or, or one of the other. But it's just all in, as you say, in the eyes of the beholder. I mean, um, I look at life from my perspective, and I have my druthers, just as I'm sure all of you do that you've been enumerating what's this and what's that. Hmm. So well, to me, that's what it's about. It's just what I feel. It's all about what I feel. Well, but the uh, and, is the old philosophers back there, Socrates, Plato, all those, all those guys, they uh, they had these long, long works about uh, is beauty subjective or object? Is there a quality in be- in a beautiful thing that can be measured? For example, I mean, if there can we, is there a way to measure beauty? Is there a, is there something in something that makes it beautiful? It must be because uh, well, I love- wonder if it has to do with the quality of life. Then, if um, if beauty promotes um, clean living, shall we say, hmm. or or propagates further expansion of uh, life as we think that it should be, not terrible. If that could be construed as a, mm. a quality of beauty, well, it's certainly uh, utilitarian, and it's. <laughs> I think, yeah. and also that the, they used to beauty is as uh, uh, in harmony and in balance and in uh, right something which also is functional. I mean, the, somebody I'm told for, like cashmere sweaters. Yes, exactly. absolutely. <laughs> no. But somebody well, said, I hate to say it, I hate to say it, but fur, fur, you know, fur. I mean, yeah. how beautiful is that? <laughs> fur, when, yes. Or alive. It's but great it's when it's on an animal, too. <laughs> yes. well, it's great when it's not, I have to say. <laughs> I did a long time ago when I was sailing around. Uh, a friend of mine said, "Well, you can always tell when a boat, a sailboat, is going to perform well because you can just look at the lines of it. Well, especially when it's out of the water, you can see that this is going to work. Just be- and there's a certain beauty in that. It's, a, it's I form. I agree more. <laughs> yeah. Beauty of form and form um, symmetry. Symmetry, right. and then of course exactly. there's the the golden mean that uh, everyone we, was. Uh, you bring up something though, Paul. Using, yeah. Uh, the thing that um, beauty can is attached to objects. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and it's also uh, connected to education. I might look and at math. the same. Same boat and uh, or sail and not see any of the mm. things that you see in it. Sure. In terms of its beauty. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, sure. Of course. And there can well, be a I'm sort of intuitive to beauty. Over the hill and and about out of cell range, so I'll beg off. But it's right. a great discussion. I've enjoyed it. Thank Thanks, you, Carter. Thank you. Appreciate it. But the the uh, the intuitive versus the academic approach to beauty that may be more emotional and the mm-hmm. academic approach is that maybe the appreciation of symmetry and the and and then the the inspiration that that engenders to find out and why also exposure i mean the more you see mm. you know the more the more variety you see as far, especially in art and then it, it it wakes up your brain and at least it has and and you know gives you all sorts of all sorts of, of choices and comparisons and all, all kinds of things. I have a wonderful seascape in my bedroom that 
was painted by an Amanda Eichstead. You may have heard of her. Good heavens. It's a lovely painting. I've heard of that. I've heard that name. It's... I know. She's, she's, she's well known. She <laughs> has beautiful teeth. Beautiful oh. teeth. Yeah, she wore a retainer, unlike, unlike her sister. And that's very important sometimes, teeth. Yeah, uh, uh, it, I'm it enthralled with Social status teeth. Yeah. Uh, exactly. is conveyed immediately by your teeth. By teeth. Right. That's why it's mine are so it's early it's white. Is that why you Minority. wear that beard? <laughs> oh, That's why I'm hiding my beard. teeth. Um, so, okay, I'll get off and let oh. you guys have a have a um, another person call. Thank you, MK. Uh, Thanks, MK. Thank, Thank you very much. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye. So we have two lines open now. Four one five six six three eight four nine two and 8317. And, uh, you know, just hang on until you hear me say you're on the air. And please... Keep your comments, the language in your comments, clean. KWMR, this is KWMR, by the way, Point Race Station, 90.5, 89.9, Bolinas, 92.3 in the San Geronimo Valley, and streaming live on KWMR.org. And KWMR is supported by Absentee Winery, making natural wine in Point Race Station, Using old world methods and no sulfites. Information about the winery is available by calling 415 669 7600 or by visiting absenteewinery.com. That's A B S E N T E E winery.com. Com. And we're also supported by College of Marin, offering 62 associate degrees, 54 certificate programs to prepare for in-demand Bay Area careers, and degrees for transfer to a UC or to a state university. Financial aid, tutoring, and other programs available. Summer classes start June 11th, and fall classes start August 18th. Registration at marin.edu. And we're also supported by, of course, our listener members and Calendar Club members, and by Marin Symphony, providing live classical music programs performed by a professional orchestra at the Marin Center every fall through spring. Information about subscriptions and single tickets available by calling the administrative office Monday through Friday at 415 479 8100 or by visiting Marin Symphony. Dot org, and this is Let's Talk Call in Radio. We have Sally Phillips, Stephen Hurwitz, and I'm Paul Raffel, and we await your call. Please call in. I have nothing else to say. Four one five four one five six six three eight four nine two to start with. That's one of our phone lines, and just uh, give us a call about beauty. Is what we're talking about. We're talking about the the theory of beauty. Is it is it inherent in something and in some things and not in other things or is it purely well, subjective is only there's beauty in design we've been talking about right. that yeah there's beauty uh, attributed to young women and a lot of trouble arises out of this because it causes a grasping and then so the idea is that as women are aging they're losing their youthful beauty oh, uh, wow. instead of we're changing and um, yes. our beauty is changing and our isn't the beauty always there though you no know, this well, doesn't always apply to uh, aging um, plastic surgery in Korea is very popular among young girls mm. it's sort of like Good. a gift wow. a birthday gift that your parents can give you or having um, in my m- in my mom's day, in my mom's day, uh, <laughs> having her nose fixed, she had mm. her nose fixed, and she, fixed. Uh, yeah. Well, to make it more yeah, beautiful. nose job they call yeah, it, yeah. which is such a ridiculous, brusque, silly term. Mm. And she kept l- lording over me that I would need one soon. As <laughs> when I was like ten, she kept telling me, we're going to get your nose clipped. Oh, dear. Like I'm a Doberman. Well, that's awful. And, and, and I need my tail docked or something. But anyway, it, it never happened, and I always wondered if she was disappointed <laughs> that I never actually needed it. I oh. always wondered that. You think but, she hated you for that? that no, you had a no, no, nose. no, no, Dr. Freud. I, I did not. <laughs> um, I just wondered about it. Like, was she secretly, like, disappointed 
because she had to go through something. Um, did she have to? to? Mm. She felt she did to enhance her beauty. Mm. Absolutely. So yeah, um, she was really all about beauty. Too. Where did where did those in her day? Where did the ideas of beauty come from? I mean, I think for her the idea was to be. Um, beautiful to be yes from hollywood Mm -hmm. and 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 hollywood did um dictate pretty intensely uh what women wore a lot of the hollywood costume designs went into the mainstream Mm -hmm. and uh hairstyles Uh, so yes i would say hollywood has dictated and perpetrated a lot of mythologies and uh, and goals that aren't so useful Right. Um, it's a tyrannical sort of uh, move and, towards a certain kind of beauty. I think it's yes. marketing. Well, yeah, it, well but, exactly. it, but I mean, it is marketing. But if you have, if you're going to be a movie star, you have to, as a woman, you've you've got to really be beautiful. Hmm. If you're not quite up to par of beautiful. Uh, they'll do everything they can to rework you, to make you so, uh, styling mm. you. And this still goes on, maybe not as grotesquely as as it was Oof. in the 30s and 40s. But Sad. also, if you're maybe not what you would call a raving beauty, uh, then you become a character actor. That's why I love uh, <laughs> Shirley MacLaine. Uh, she, who, a very beautiful woman, uh, has in, retained that in her uh uh, her older age, old age, really. She just she's one of those women who is not ashamed of the changes, and, uh, and you know she uses it to her advantage. She's wonderful. There's uh, there are other yes. actresses just like that. Well, Frances McDormand also um, is very uh, a very strong supporter of not getting plastic surgery and not augmenting yourself in these weird surgical ways or in injected ways and she she's very uh what i would call uh down to earth and uh, be- beguilingly attractive i mean she just incarnated with a fascinating face hmm. so she and and i believe her husband said to her well you know you're you're aging beautifully and not everyone ages the same way so i think there was an actually an article because she's mm. she's somewhat outspoken about this issue and but the, and uh the studies that have been done on human beauty certainly on female and male beauty i guess uh attractiveness are all about symmetry apparently the more symmetrical your face is the more attractive it seems oh but then is, then there was that but movement then with models where you had someone like quirky. Lauren Hutton who oh. who had a gap tooth and her face was slightly asymmetrical yep. and she was a a real she superstar. Used it. She used it. So it's fascinating how the mm-hmm. camera can can capture you and how people respond to that. Right, and uh, again, that symmetry being a beautiful thing goes back to that whole the golden mean and the uh, symmetry and form and. That being a part of beauty, not and in sexual selection, of course, which we can get into later. But meanwhile, we have a caller. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name, please? Hi, this is Mia calling. Hey, Mia. Hey, how are you guys? <laughs> Hello, Mia. Hello, from the other room. Um, <laughs> I, as always, I'm calling with not exactly sure what I am trying to say, but I have a feeling in my heart. Um, so I think there's an element of beauty. I think there's sort of the objective, like, there is the symmetry and all that, and that is um, kind of equally recognized by everyone. Um, and there's also, like, a, I think there's a magic um, that brings beauty. Um, I, what I was just thinking of, like, something that beautiful that happened this week was I was just, like, walking to Staples to get a calendar. And um, <laughs> I walked back, uh, like, kind of by the freeway, and there was this big tarp that was over these flowers and the sun was coming through it and it's just like i took a bunch of photos of it and it was just like this cool sort of synchronicity and magic that created beauty so it was like literally a tarp hmm. over some flowers i love it flowers were probably gonna die you know i mean it was like not necessarily like a beautiful situation for everybody involved but it was 
gorgeous because the light was coming through and lighting up the flowers underneath this tarp and like <laughs> it just looked amazing um and so there is some sort of synchronicity and magic mm-hmm. that i think comes in and and unexpected ways in life where you don't expect it or or with people too like some days they're more beautiful than others because they are glowing from something that they're pleased about or mm-hmm, um, sure. so there's some sort of element of magic in beauty that sort of like layers on to that math <laughs> right. so oh, that's I just to mention that yeah. that is a wonderful uh, example and it's sort of like it reminds me me of that film American Beauty where Wes Bentley a wonderful actor that we don't see enough of he's a young man in the film he makes films he just is always videotaping everything mm-hmm. and he makes a video of a plastic bag oh, yeah. blowing through the air and it never really touches down mm-hmm. it keeps getting buffeted mm-hmm. and billowed and going up and it's just a plastic bag from a convenience store and he finds that that is completely beautiful and mm-hmm. that's kind of what you were talking about Mia in a way mm-hmm. like I think something about uh, authenticity also I mean and it's kind of pretentious to be like oh authenticity blah 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 but there is some <laughs> beauty in um, sort of something that you could not predict that you happen upon and you're like damn this is a cool world you know yeah. um, and I think there's a lot that for me um, beauty lies in, in things like that a lot yeah so, thank you guys thank, thank you, you Mia. Mia bye and we have another caller. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name, please? It's Lyons. Hello, Seem Lyons. to have the whole office calling us <laughs> in on you today. Um, I, w- uh, I was inspired because of the, the reference to symmetry. Hmm. And I remember, I, I think this is still true, uh, way back, I think his name was Son of Sam, hmm. horrible mass murderer. Hmm. And one of the things... Boy, if you can uh, weave that into the subject, that's going to be amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The San Francisco Chronicle, or, you know, maybe it was the Examiner, uh, at the time printed a photograph of him. It was a strange photograph. Maybe it was a drawing kind of taken from the photograph. And it showed how his face was literally symmetrical. You know, left side and right side. Mm. And this symmetry was pointed out as being related to his mental instability and his craziness and his violence. Huh. In other words, a, a totally symmetrical face, identical left side, right side, is not, quote, normal. Mm. Wow. <laughs> now I, I'm and a little I thought, scared. Oh, that's a good thing because. The left side of my jaw is not as pronounced as the right side of my jaw. Mm-hmm. And I have two moles on the right cheek and none on the left cheek. So I thought, okay. <laughs> yes, so right. we, we need not fear you, and you are That's beautiful. Right. That's right. That's right. There will be but no. the, the other thing that occurs to me is um, amongst women, this whole notion of beauty and having to catch a man or catch a partner, whatever. Mm creates such competition amongst us and i just so deplore that and I, it makes me so sad Ooh. that that women are in competition with each other sometimes yeah. around being the most beautiful you know when you talk well. about symmetry though uh what about frank Gehry, who uh I certainly he loves asymmetry that's right yeah yeah well i or think his work his work is marvelous his work is beautiful in its challenge of the norm, but I always worry about leaking roofs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Frank Lloyd Wright is where you want the leaky roofs. Yeah, he, 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 Civic yes. Center. There That's is true. beauty and utility, too, when a thing yeah. works beautifully yeah. and doesn't yeah. leak. Well, thanks, you guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Lions. But, you know, architecture is a great example. What we look yeah. at, that asymmetry is now beautiful, mm. whereas, you know, you've been talking about symmetry. Right. Well, so again, they, like we said, they used to use the golden mean, the golden ratio, what is it, 1.6613 or something to, uh, it works out as a rectangle. Uh, whatever that means. It is everywhere. And, uh, and the geometry of it is a spiral that is replicated everywhere throughout nature. But, um, uh, they used to use, I think the Parthenon was, 
said to be built on the golden mean. And uh, they even, the pillars in the Parthenon to go outwards, get fatter at the top, so that when you're standing below them, standing in front of them, because of the foreshortening and the, the perspective, but they made them wider at the top so they wouldn't look narrower at the top. So they look the same all the way up. Those Greeks were so uh, smart. I tell you, man, talk about symmetry. But uh, that was manufactured symmetry. They were overcoming the, uh, the effects of perspective by actually building in... Something. So I have a question about beauty and and uh, sexual identity or male versus female in the animal kingdom. Sexual selection. Oof. But in the animal Powerful. kingdom, it's the male of the various species that are often more mm-hmm. decorative, or if that's the right word. Yes. They're more florid, uh, like the turkeys that are out there scuttling about and With clucking. Their, it's the the guys who are displaying displaying their tails uh, for the women. So in this case, b- beauty is attributed to the male of well, the species. Well, so, yeah, runaway, uh, things like runaway uh, evolution, runaway sexual selection f- of traits, fascinating stuff. So things like the, those uh, tropical lyre birds and all those different beautiful birds of paradise, um, they get more and more florid, more and more outrageous colors and shapes because those shapes are being chosen. So it goes on down generations. And the more more showy you are as a suitor, a male usually, uh, you're trying to attract a female. And the female just goes around and looks for the one that has the biggest peacock tail or a more colorful, longer trailing feathers, whatever. And those traits will keep getting more and more pronounced until they become a, a liability. Like the peacock's tail can only be so big before it gets caught by predators, right? I mean, it has to be, you have to be able to get away from or predators. Or just weighs him down so his little, yeah. he falls on or his falls butt over. and his little <laughs> legs are kicking up in the air. Help! Aren't, aren't birds uh, colorful because they want to attract prey and lead them away from the, the nest? Never well, thought of it no. that way. I, that's what, well, certainly no, I think that's common. Is it? Yeah, hmm. the, that's why the male has all the color and all the bright. Uh, Females yeah. do. He he wants to, uh, hmm. I mean, you know, protect the nest by uh, by tri- by distracting. Th- that's right. Distraction. Predators. That's really, exactly I'd it. never heard that before. Really, yeah, I like it. So I'm going right. to say that that's. We should write a book somebody's about Somebody's calling in just to straighten us oh, out. Really? Oh, sorry, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, caller, you're on the air. What's your name, please? My name is Ruth Gendler. I know oh, Sally Phillips. I know you, Ruth. A zillion years ago. <laughs> Hi, and, Ruth. Um, I'm in Berkeley. A friend of mine in West Marin alerted me to the show today because um, about 12 years ago, I wrote a book called Notes on the Need for Beauty. Uh-huh. And Nishama interviewed me. Uh-huh. Talked about her 93-year-old mother getting ready to die and saying, well, maybe not today. Bring me my earrings. Um, <laughs> I love it. The reason I wrote a book about beauty is because years before that, I had written a book called The Book of Qualities. I personified beauty, and I said, beauty is startling. She wears a gold shawl in the summer and sells seven kinds of honey at the farmer's market. She's young and old at once, my daughter and my grandmother. In school, she excelled in mathematics and poetry. Beauty doesn't mind. Beauty doesn't anger easily, but she was annoyed with the journalist who kept asking about her favorites, as if beauty would have one favorite color or one favorite flower. Beauty doesn't mind questions, and she's fond of riddles. Beauty will dance with anyone who's brave enough to ask her. And what I found over the years is that women love that line, beauty will dance with anyone who's brave enough to ask her, Hmm. because it takes beauty out of the realm of appearance and attraction brings it inside and outside so that you're saying beauty needs to be invited, beauty responds to courtesy, beauty moves, beauty is an energy. And it's really in some ways unfortunate that we're using the same word. Beauty is considered the most, or one of the most superficial qualities. It's also one of the most profound. 
because it's a quality of body and soul. Mm -hmm. And we keep talking about it in this culture with its fear of soul in very literal terms of beautiful young women, beautiful landscapes. That may be fine if it was part of a greater conversation. But when we only um, reduce beauty to the surface, we're um, denying many other kinds of beauty. And um, Mm. it's this impossible quality to to define because Mm. it's very elusive and contradictory, but it's so wonderful to talk about. So just listening to you speaking as I was coming in, turning on the computer radio this morning, it is, it's very, everything you say about it is like, partly true and it's very noble it's not noble at all it's very complex it's very simple it can be wabi-sabi it can be humble it can be venice so i think you know like i said it's beauties plural Mm. and yes to as many of them as we can um enjoy you know it's it's about among other things delight um, yeah, yes. The suffering f- around women and beauty is a piece of it, mm, right. but we get awfully caught in that story. And I, it may be too idealistic, but if you look at the femur bone or you look at the intricacy of the beauty of all our bodies, it's like, wow. Yeah. You know? It's, well, the wisdom of, <laughs> of nature and the, the beauty of, as you say, our, our bodies, the cells, everything. Yeah. As Keats says <laughs> so famously, beauty. Oh, no. Hey, hey, I love John Keats, and I'm going to say this. <laughs> and Ruth Gendler is going to stand behind me. I know it and support me. <laughs> beauty is truth, truth, beauty. That is all ye need know on earth. Yeah. And all ye need to know. You yeah. cynical devil, Paul Raphael. <laughs> yeah, well, also John DeGraff, um, famous for affluenza and Take Back Your Time. I just saw him in Berkeley from Seattle, and he's doing a day in Octo- October 2nd called And Beauty for All. Mm. So there's a website for that, And Beauty for All. And Beauty for All. Fabulous. So, uh, yeah, well, uh, yes, be- many layered beauties. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Lovely. Fun to talk about. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Ruth. Thanks Wait, for calling wonderful. in. After all these years? Yes. <laughs> Hope to see you soon, Miss Ruth. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. And we have another caller. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name, please? This is Karin. Karin. Hello, Karin. Hello. Or actually, Karin. 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 So I just wanted to refer to something that Stephen said when he first started the show that, that win was not beauty. You know, he said that the blowing the, the wind and stuff like that. Oh, no. And I'm actually looking, <laughs> out, I'm actually looking out of the waves out here, and the beauty it of is. the white cat it is, is yeah. amazing. Absolutely. And then I was thinking, at the time, you know, when you have windmills that on your farm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wind is beautiful. Yeah. When you're in a sailboat, wind is beautiful. So exactly. I just wanted to kind of say that, you know, it, it all is Whatever you're looking for. You know, nature can never nature can never not be beautiful. Exactly. It can be too much wind, Karine. It can. It can. But you <laughs> it's can such a thing. Fun. It can also be fun, you know. Yes. Yeah. If no, you were not according to my acupuncturist. Hang glider. Yeah. But oh, another should, thing I was yeah. thinking of, a couple of weeks ago I was listening to a show on KWMR and I don't really remember the, much of it about the details, but they were talking about the whole thing of beauty and the whole thing of as we age and when Somebody mm. says to somebody like my age, "Oh God, you look great for your age." Ooh, you know it's such a put down. That is, yeah, but a, you know we say it all the time, all of us. Yeah, I it's it. really I, underhanded. It's yeah. weird, and it really struck me because you know men they they become distinguished as they get older, and women <laughs> get old. You know, we yeah, no, older. I I I agree with that. Yeah, um, we well, you know think about window. Uh, uh, the hurricanes down there and in the Caribbean. I was watching it on television. It was awesome and beautiful. But if you were down there, if you're in the middle, it's destructive. It. That's right. Yeah. As the destructive force. I'm looking at the and beauty, and beauty for all dot org site right now. Everybody. Oh, yeah. And may I just say though that uh, looking down on a hurricane from the upper atmosphere, beautiful, beautiful form. There's right. that spiral again. Right. 
which is everywhere throughout nature, and was such a, a big part of the biomimicry movement. There's certainly a company in uh, California that uh, that creates fans that move air more easily because you're not trying to push it in a straight line. You're doing it with a spiral motion, and water wants to flow Beautiful. in spirals. It's a... It's a yeah, and pipes. They, they're making tubing that actually makes a spiral instead of trying to push water through right angles and things. You, you, you have pipes, the tubing that actually makes the water spiral. Moves uh, easier. Yeah. I mean, look at what's happening in Hawaii right now. You know, it's this lots of his tail, but it's all, and there's a certain sense of amazing beauty in it. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was looking and I saw a thing where they showed from the from outer space what it looked like from outer space, and it was like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, it's uh, it depends on your proximity to the lava flow. I'm guessing. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Karen. Well, thank you, and uh, yeah. See you soon. Just try to listen to talk. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye. We have another caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? Hey, I'm Melinda. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> so, um, I think that our perception of beauty has to do with um, the possibility of us. Uh, it, it has to do with evolution. Hmm. What is what is beautiful to us? It makes you feel good, right? When you feel good, you're more likely to be in a higher state of being, and um, the more that happens, the more we evolve. As opposed to, um, well, it, it's, since we live in this dualistic um, world, ugly. Mm. And, uh, you know, certain things in art or nature or in our lives more with one another, we feel uh, the ugly, and it, it's a real downer. That's yeah. a great word, and you're the first person uh, that brought that word up. Ugly, yeah. Mm. Well, uh, I have a quote from Terry Tempest Williams that kind of feeds into what you're saying. And um, beauty feeds a different kind of hunger. Beauty is not optional, but a strategy for survival. Finding beauty in a broken world is acknowledging that beauty leads us to our deepest and highest selves. It, It inspires us. We have an innate desire for grace. Hmm. Mm. Okay, well, that's a good wrap up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> thank you and uh thank you melinda thank, thank you, you melinda okay. bye bye well there it is it's been a Beauty. beautiful program it was a beautiful show and uh yeah i thanks to all the callers thank you to everyone who called thank you to all the listeners who didn't call thank you both thank you sally thank you Stephen. and um next week we'll be back with another show, and it'll be about something.